I coordinate Erie's program for Eastern Southern Africa. Basically, we're a collaborator, we're not a donor. In Burundi here, we've got Joseph and a young team that's doing a fantastic job. It's important that we first teach them what is really the rice, so that they can improve things, starting by knowing the plant. Understanding the crop. Understanding the crop. Part of Erie's mandate is to try and identify people that we can work with and build their capacity to try and help rice production throughout the region. We're working with a group of ex-combatant women who really didn't have access to land or many other things in life, as a matter of fact, because they had fought in the war and all they wanted was an opportunity. So we basically cut a deal with them where we said, we will help you get access to land, to seed and fertilizer. So in the first year, we supplied all of the inputs that cost money. They supplied their labor. Girango to Gitangura Gukorana, Girango Bamwe, Bamwe, Muraba Trikum, Bara Vivone, Twaraban, Menga Twaronze, Menga Twarago, Wekukokari Twara Kora to Gatang, and Gufugose to Gakorago, Mogaban Hagri Chotoro, Ariku, Turakora to Tarushe Go, Sengakumet Wakora to Gachaturo, Umbu Menshi, to Karong Hagasabuni, Kandi to Tarushe Go, Se, to Karong Hagahuzu Keza, to Kamesa, Ekanamu Fungura, Kumbule, Hajewe Nivus, Ekuru Hande Guanj. So for us it was an opportunity to work with a group of people that had been neglected or had slipped through the cracks of the system who really wanted to actually do something for themselves. This is their best quality. Yeah. We found often working with women is much easier because they are the ones that normally do the work in the field. They are the decision makers, often the breadwinners in the family. So we find it very, very easy to work with groups like this. The present system of farming around here is based on beans. And they normally only grow one crop a year. And the reason behind that is often the land you see around here gets flooded and inundated. So rice being a semi-aquatic plant is ideally suited to that environment. So if we can level their fields, get some control of the water on the fields, we're giving them another option, which they didn't previously have. I wonder what variety it is. Uh, it's a mixture. Name, variety. A mixture. Yeah. Yeah, variety. It's not one variety. Mm. Oh, OK. So, yeah. You have to be a good farmer to produce rice. It's about getting the crop in on time. It's about getting the crop off on time. And if we can teach them those, basics, then their whole productivity, not only in rice, but across the whole farm will improve. How are they milling their rice at the moment? Mm -hmm. They go to millers and they pay a lot of money. Okay. This is the answer, the direct answer. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully after this year, no more pay. <laughs> We've decided to actually bring in a portable rice mill and go from village to village and they can mill their own rice. That way they then get control of the whole value chain. So they become totally in control of their own destiny. The next step for us is to try and get you permanent land and we will work it back. <laughs> when you look into the face of those people that you can help or have been able to, to just open up an opportunity and then they come through and they blossom, you don't need any more reward than that. And in the same way to Joseph and the research team, by giving them an opportunity, helping them develop and then seeing what the outcome is, 
that's what keeps you going. Yes, Africa's tough. Sometimes we fall over, but when you get up and you have a small win, that keeps you going. Hey. <laughs>